Hey, Mark Spencer from Ripple Training here. We're talking about Title Mations. I'm in the Titles browser. Ripple Title Mations is selected. And this video is about the text reveal theme, these four different templates right here. They all work pretty much the same way. So I'm using one as an example, which is reveal right, right here in the timeline. I've selected, I'll press the forward slash key to play it. And that's how it looks by default. In the title inspector, we have controls to turn on or off the incoming or outgoing animations. I frequently turn the build out off to turn off the outgoing animation when I need to apply this to a shorter clip. The position parameter is the same as this on-screen control here, which allows you to change the position of the entire text and the mask that goes along with it. Animate in by lets you choose what comes in. So right now it's set by line. So if we play, each line of text comes in one after the other. The timing of how they come in is determined by the spread. So for example, if I move the spread down to one and play, each line comes in right after one after another. If I set the spread to a higher value, like five, they all come in closer to the same time, but the first one's still coming in first. The total time for the animation doesn't change, just the number of objects that are being animated at a time. One very interesting thing is if you put the spread to zero, you'll get more of a type on effect. I'll put that back to one for now. So by combining the animated in by and the in spread parameters, you can make really different changes to the animation. For example, if I go to character and put the in spread to zero, we'll get a type on effect where each character types on. Or I could increase the spread and change the direction to backwards and the letters fly in from the back to the front. So by combining these three parameters together, animate in by, spread, and direction, you can create very different looks, uh, including random. If I choose random and I'll go back to word, then a random sequence of words comes in. Let's put the spread back to one so that's more obvious. If you don't like the particular randomness, you can click this generate button, which will change the random seed and give you a different result which isn't as obvious when we only have three lines here, but when you have more lines, it'll be pretty clear. Let's go back to, let's keep it at Word and go back to uh, forwards. The in type is the animation smoothing. Uh, by default, it's set to ease out for each object, but you can also choose it ease out over the entire duration of the animation or once per loop if you wanted to loop it for some reason. I don't know why you'd want to do that, but I use over entire duration. And then the in speed is how long the entire animation takes. If I drag this way down to the left and play, it'll be much slower. If I drag it way to the right and play, it'll be much faster. Animate out works exactly the same way. In fact, all of these next parameters, animate out by, out spread, out direction, random speed, out type, apply speed out, out spread, are the exact same parameters we just looked at for the in animation, just for the outgoing animation. Now, the starting and ending position adjust. Let's look at that, that's important. I'm gonna change this text to say something different. Command A to select all. Here is a long line of text escape. So if I play this one now, notice it doesn't quite start right. Let's animate in by line to make this more obvious. Okay, and I'll press Shift I to go back to the beginning of the title. And we can see, even at the beginning of the title, we still see text on the line because it's not fully off the screen. That's what the starting and ending position adjust parameters are for. They adjust the position of the text before it comes on the screen and after it leaves the screen. So for its starting position, I'm gonna drag back to move that text back off the screen. And now when we play, the text starts fully off the screen. By the same token, when the text comes off, we need to make sure it fully exits. So with the title selected, I'll press Shift O to go to the last frame and then adjust the ending position to move it fully off the screen. And now when I play, it starts fully off the screen and ends fully off the screen. Finally, we have an option to show a line where the text emanates from. I'll turn it on, and it's a red line by default, and I'll play it. 
And a couple of things to notice. First of all, uh, the text comes out directly touching the line because they're both at the edge of the mask. That's what this line gap is for. So you can have the text come out a little further so that there's a gap between the text and the line. Secondly, you can adjust the line width, making it thicker. And the line position will move it away from the mask or closer to the mask. You can see it'll disappear behind the mask. If you go too far away, however, and you go back to the beginning, you'll see the text will appear on the other side of the line, which you don't want. So you want to make sure you don't move that line too far away from the mask. So I'll move it right about there. And then with the text on the screen, I'll adjust the line gap so the text moves away from it to some distance. The line points let you adjust the length of the line. And I focus just on adjusting Y. You can adjust the top of the line and the bottom of the line. And if we play now, the text comes out from the line and goes back inside the line. You can change the line's color. You can change the end caps to be round or bevel or arrows. And you can play around with those. They're pretty self-explanatory. If you do make them arrows, you can adjust the arrow length. Arrow, you only see half the arrow, but it can be a nice effect. And then you can choose whether the line moves up or moves down with this pop-up menu here. And those are the key parameters of using the text reveal theme of Titlemations.